Hey everyone, this is Yami, your Latina Next Door. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am gonna be sharing how to install beadboard for your backsplash in your kitchen. We chose beadboard for three reasons. It was inexpensive, fast to install, and it gave us that cottage farmhouse look we were going for. Also, this video is in collaboration with eShine, who provides beautiful LED under mount cabinet lighting. I'm also gonna be showing you how easy it is to install in this video. Our kitchen was actually pretty dark, and this lightened the space up dramatically. And having that extra lighting helps showcase that beautiful beadboard backsplash that we installed ourselves. All right, let's get started. If you've been following along, you know we have done quite a bit of progress in our kitchen. As you can see, we're removing our windowsill here. You don't have to do that. This is just what we're doing because we're replacing all of the windowsills and casings in the entire house. We decided to go with a more modern farmhouse style for our casings. And once those were installed, we were ready for the beadboard. The first thing you need to do is take measurements between your countertop and underneath your cabinets. And you're gonna need to do it in several locations because sometimes you will see that they're not all exactly the same. We ordered three sheets of beadboard for our backsplash but only ended up needing to use two of them. You see us removing the bottom edge of the beadboard here because the material can sometimes bend or warp at the ends. And we wanted a straight cut. After our first edge was cut, we started cutting the beadboards to size with the measurements that we use from the countertop all the way up to underneath the cabinets. After each panel, we would come in and we would dry fit it, making sure that it worked perfectly with the measurements and the cuts that we had made. And then we continued cutting the rest of the panels one by one making sure that each panel fit correctly before cutting the new one. We also numbered each of the panels in the back so that we did not lose track of which one was which. Now, as you can see here, especially with the stove area, you're gonna see there's gonna be varying heights. That is all we're worried about cutting right now. Just focus on the height between the counter and the cabinets or even behind the stove area. We'll worry about the distance across later on. You will end up with pieces that are longer that you need horizontally however it's totally fine we'll address those vertical cuts later in the process another thing i want to walk you through is the direction you should work in you want to work from one side of your kitchen to the other side if you notice we started on the right side of our kitchen and started working our way through towards the left the key thing here with working with beadboard is that you want to keep your pattern continuous as much as you can throughout the entire kitchen. You want a flat section, a ridge section, a flat section, and so on and so forth. There's going to be a couple of exceptions and a couple of tricky areas that are going to make you rework how you put your beadboard, and I'll go over that in just a second. So our first section we put down, and then our next one was going to come in, and we we're going to have to cut it shorter. In that piece, you're going to cut it to go all the way up to that corner. Working in this direction worked. However, if you look to the left, there is the larger part that's above the stove area. And we were gonna have to work in the opposite direction from that end of the cabinet towards that same corner. The reason we did it this way is because we wanted to end on a full ridge or a full flat piece on that beadboard. Because if we would have worked our way out, we weren't in control of what piece ended up at the end of that cabinet corner. And you would have seen the seam a lot more. So working toward the corner again, we were able to control the exact edge of that beadboard and we were able to control the seam a lot better leaving this seam less noticeable, especially since there's gonna be a lot more area visible right over the stove. I tried to include these graphics so that you guys can get an idea better of what I'm talking about, and I hope this makes sense. Now you're probably wondering about the seam in the corner and how it's not exactly gonna match up to the pattern. However, this corner seam is gonna be a lot easier to hide, especially when it's farther in to the wall area. It's gonna be further from the eye and you're most likely gonna have something in that corner of your counter anyways. Plus, you're gonna to have to fill it in with caulk to decrease that gap and hide it completely. And honestly, when you have it done at the end, you won't even notice it. 
So then after you get that panel to the right of the stove done and secure, then you're going to want to work your way left towards the other end. Now the back space behind your stove may not match up exactly with the pattern of your beadboard. So you may have to end up cutting that one board more like a Tetris piece in order for it to fit. And that way you can have a full flat section or a ridge section as the end of that panel. And then you can continue on adding your other ones. Okay, so now that you have an idea of how you should be putting them up on your wall, I just wanted to let you know that I do suggest you painting it prior and giving it one coat. Now the speed board is a little rough and even a bit porous and you'll see that as you're installing it sometimes you can mark it up. So I suggest you go ahead and paint it and I'm using the same paint that I use for my kitchen cabinets. It's my tried and true emerald trim enamel by Sharon Williams. In the kitchen you do run the risk of getting food and splatter on your backsplash so I do suggest using it in semi-gloss as well and this is highly wipeable you can even use a magic eraser on this paint and it will not damage the finish and of course you don't need a top coat and as you can see I like to go with a brush and get all of the crevices first and then I smooth it over with a nice smooth four inch roller. If you haven't seen my video on how to paint kitchen cabinets, I'll go ahead and link to that tutorial in the description box and above as well. Now one more thing that you have to take into consideration is the location of those little receptacle boxes. You're going to have several in the kitchen and it's really simple to get their location on your beadboard. You're going to need to measure the bottom corner of your receptacle from the edge of that beadboard piece and from the bottom where it meets the countertop. Then you're going to measure the width of that receptacle box and they should really all be the same. Then you're going to determine the corner of the top left of the receptacle box and you're going to get your shape. Then using a drill and a jigsaw you will make your openings. And then to adhere it to the wall, you will need liquid nails and a finishing nail gun. We use small dots because the beadboard is actually very light. And if we ever wish to replace it in the future, it won't be very hard to remove because there's not a ton of adhesive. The Latino engineer used the nail gun for the top part of the beadboard as well as the bottom and around the outlet openings. Sometimes he would check and push it up against the wall and see if there's any hollow areas because the walls usually aren't even and straight and he would add a nail wherever it was needed. Now this can be done by one person but it did help having two sets of hands whenever dry fitting these pieces. Now another area that was going to be kind of tricky was around the window because it had lots of cuts to be made. We worked from underneath the window and worked our way into the corner like we did previously. So we had to bust out geometry, calculus, and trig to try to get all these lined up. So moment of truth. Now you'll see that the outlets are actually pulled out. You don't have to do this. It's just that the Latino engineer was replacing all of our outlets and light switches in the kitchen and that's why he had those pulled out. So just disregard those. Like we did with the rest of the kitchen, we just like to dry fit it first before we put the glue and then nail it in. That way we just make sure everything's lined up and cut correctly before we just start going crazy with the glue. All right, so in order to cut the beadboard to match this right here, I made a pattern and I basically just took my kid's construction paper and I kind of fit it around here and added the measurements from up here, like right here, it says five and seven eighths from here to here. So we know that this entire length right here is gonna be that. 
and then I took the um, entire measurement from here to here and then I just cut that out and made this little template and that's what we're going to put on the beadboard in order to cut it out and make it fit. Last one. <laughs> Like a glove. Oh. Now we can actually start buttoning everything up and actually finish the room. Oh yeah! Next, it was off to making all of those seams disappear. And I use caulk for this paintable waterproof caulk that you would use in like a bathroom or kitchen area. And you just fill in all those crevices and you just wipe your finger on it to smooth it all out. I do like to use gloves for this because I don't like getting that stuff on my hands. And the Latino engineer did all of the caulking above where it actually connected to the cabinets underneath. Now you'll also need to caulk the bottom section of the beadboard where it connects to your countertop and you need to add blue painter's tape for this. Now I zoomed in so you can see it a little better. You can see the butcher block countertop through those little ridges in the beadboard. And after you actually apply your caulk just the same way, a small bead and then run your finger across, when you remove your painter's tape, you will no longer see the butcher block through those little ridges. It should be one continuous straight line. And you do want to remove that painter's tape before the caulk dries. But we're not done yet. After this, I put in some pre-taped plastic that I love to use whenever I have messy projects or I want to protect a surface like my newly installed countertops. I put it right at the base of my backsplash because now I'm going to give it another coat of paint. And this is definitely necessary even if you are painting the backsplash white because you will notice that the cot color is different from the paint color and it will require another coat of paint to fully hide those seams. And again, I go in first with my angled brush to get in all those crevices and then I come back and smooth it over with my favorite four inch roller and I'll put all of these products in the description box below. I know right now that I'm not painting the underneath part of the cabinet, but I do come back and actually paint it all white because that was actually getting on my nerves <laughs> and it looks so much better with one color. And now for an amazing disappearing act. That seam is already cocked, but you add some paint to it and it completely disappears. Am I the only one that finds that extremely satisfying? I let the backsplash dry and then it was time to add lights underneath my cabinets. And for these, I am using these eShine LED lighting kits. Super easy to install underneath your cabinets for extra lighting in your kitchen. I am so excited about these. These are dimmable and they are hand wave activated to turn on and off. These are so cool. And make sure you stay tuned because in a few minutes, I will share a coupon code for you guys to get a special discount on these lights if you wish to add lighting to your cabinets as well. Now these come in both the warm white and cool white options, but we chose the cool white because I personally like a nice light and bright kitchen. These lights come in different lengths as well as different packaging options, whether you need one single one or as many as 12 and they are nice and slick in design. And that little black dot is where you wave your hand in order to turn it on. These simply plug into your wall and since kitchens have so many outlets along the counters, it's super easy to just go ahead, install these underneath, and plug them right in. We are probably gonna eventually hardwire these guys in, but for right now, we wanted to show you how easy it is to put them up yourselves. Now you will see that this will come with different pieces in your kit, and each of them serves a different purpose, but the instructions are really easy to follow. So one of the reasons that we use these light fixtures is, you know, they're very versatile. So you can either butt them up against each other with this coupling, or you can space them out with this coupling, which is flexible. So that all depends on how many lights 
you need to put across and how big your kitchen is. It's all preference, you know, do you want a ton of light or do you just want ambiance? You know, we want a ton of lights because these are dimmable with this. So, you know, that's the way we chose. But again, it's all up to you. Next, it was trying to determine which way we wanted the light to face. Because it has a little silver bar, you can either put the bar towards the back and it shines straight down, or you can put that silver bar to the front and it will actually shine on your backsplash. Powering them is really easy. All you have to do is connect the plug to the section that says connect power. So we decided not to put the glue strip on because, you know, since I'm going to hard, well, I'm not going to hard wire, I'm just going to put a receptacle in the cabinet so you won't be able to see this. So I may have to take them off in the future, but um, like I said, this is pretty easy. If you weren't going to use the screws, you can just glue them up, use the glue strip and just put them up. And if you do choose to screw them in, you can use a drill or a hand screwdriver. And you might need some back stretches before you start. But all joking aside, these were so easy to install and they have a nice sleek and minimal look to them. You won't even notice that they're there. Next, it was time to hide the cording and they make it really easy for you because they even give you the little hooks in order for you to attach them to the wall and put them out of your way. It's all about gathering the end of the cord and then attaching it right up underneath your cabinet so that no one sees the cable. The plugs blend in pretty easily because they are white just like my backsplash and you don't even see them while you're in front of those cabinets. And I'm a short person so as you can see they completely disappear. Now all you need to do to turn them on and off is place your hand directly in front of the one that had that little black dot. And to change the light brightness, all you do is place your hand and hold it underneath that same spot and adjust it to what you like. I love having various options of lighting for my kitchen. Our partners at eShine is giving anyone 10% off their purchase price by using the coupon code the Latina Next Door. I'll have a link in my description box to their website and you even get free shipping with a $25 order. I love being able to start my coffee in the morning without having to turn on all the lights and if you're an avid DIYer like the Latino engineer and I are, you're going to love how easy these are to install. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to install your very own beadboard backsplash. This only cost us $40. Let me know what you guys think of the transformation. I am very happy with how it turned out and now with my new lighting I can highlight all the hard work that the Latino engineer and I did. Thank you so much to eShine for partnering with us on this video. If you haven't seen the rest of our Fixer Upper series, I'll go ahead and link to it now, and I will see you guys in the next renovation update. Until then, adios.